I can still recall the first day we had our mass. I think it was on Thanksgiving Day in 1972 or 71. It was obvious that the church was still being built, but there was not enough to accommodate us. Sometimes on a Friday or Saturday night, we would have a dance here. Oh yeah. And uh, we had a kitchen and there'd be a full, full meal and uh, dancing, music and whatnot. But uh, once they built the center over there, uh, whatever activities we had party-wise all took place over there, not over here. St. Francis de Sales was the Bishop of Geneva 400 years ago, and he is such a wonderful patron saint for our parish. He taught that holiness is for everyone, that each one of us can have a personal relationship with God and follow him, even in the midst of our busy daily lives. His book, Introduction to the Devout Life, is one of the all-time greatest manuals for the spiritual life. St. Francis de Sales was also an evangelist. He reached out to Protestants in a time of war and violence and made tens of thousands of converts and made friends with them along the way. He taught that God is love and that truth and holiness and goodness are attractive. That's the message that we get to be sending to the world today. For the first year and a half or so, while they were building the church, we were meeting over at Regina Clary. And I would also say this, Father Todd, I was amazed at his knowledge of uh, engineering, the building, the, build, the whole building trade. Also, there were two parishioners who also were in the building trade, retired. So it was good to see how you had a pastor who had a background in building, as well as these two fellows uh, helping him. So the church was built. And I would say that when the church was built, the idea was that eventually they might even build a larger church. That was the original, the larger church. Uh, but then after about, let's see, Father left about 1984, Father Todd. At uh, that point in time, they started to consider building a center. And by 86, 87, we had our center with a gym, etc. And uh, at that point, they scrapped the idea of building a whole new church. Rather, they refurbished this one. They refurbished it. And in some ways, it made it a little larger. Uh, and some of the, there were rooms on the side here that be, now became part of the church. When they first built, there were separate rooms. As one stands in the center of the church, one notices all around the church is the history of mankind. You have the very first frame dealing with God creating Adam and Eve. Then you continue the fall. Then you have God speaking to Abraham. Then you continue on with Isaac and Jacob. Then you have Moses at the burning bush. These are all little vignettes, yeah, to tell you the truth, where I taught scripture, so I, I'm very familiar with them. But the average person probably would, wouldn't know what on earth is up there. But uh, it's, it's, for me, and Father Zemania too, we used to relish just seeing those images that created so much of a scripture to us. But historically, the butterfly has been a symbol of the resurrection. Uh, you can all say hope and the Holy Spirit, Christ sending the Holy Spirit into the world. Uh, in some ways you can say that. But I think when they originally did that, uh, Father had it uh, the symbol of uh, the resurrection. Also, in front of the altar, in front of the altar, are the 12 symbols of the apostles, 12. I remember one day talking to Father Todd, uh, where I taught scripture, I was very familiar with the apostles. I said, uh, you have Judas there, you have the money bag, 30 pieces of silver. I said, it seems to me that uh, where Judas really betrays Jesus, commits suicide, he's out of the picture, and the, another apostle comes in, Matthias. Seems to me Matthias should be there. And uh, he said, well, at the time, we were thought of the 12th apostle, we thought of Judas. Maybe if we had thought about that, we might have second thoughts about putting Matthias. But that's the way it is, and that's what I was going to say, he said. <laughs> in our hearts, mercy. In 
Our parish is in a time of rebuilding after COVID and after the passing of Father Tominga and Marion. But under the leadership of our new pastor, Father Richard, I see new life springing up. We've had some wonderful events for our 50th anniversary. I see people coming back to daily mass. I see new prayer groups and devotions. I love our new shrines for the Blessed Virgin and St. Joseph that we have here in the church. Our new prayer garden dedicated to Our Lady of Fatima is coming together. And as a teacher of RCIA and adult faith formation, I always see a steady stream of people who are hungry to learn the faith, to learn how to read scripture on their own, and to draw close to God. I see this as a place where people can grow deeper in faith and where we can love and support one another. I look forward to another great 50 years and that this parish will continue to thrive and grow.